Hello, everybody. Morning. Hello. Dave, did you turn echo cancellation back off? Because I just no, heard it's it's still bad. Super bad. It's fine. Dave is having mic troubles. If you can't tell, he sounds like the most, the worst streamer ever. But that's okay. The worst streamer ever. That's really. This is what he gets for not joining until like five minutes before. I don't know if anyone saw my tweet a few minutes ago. They, <laughs> these two boys were fixing their hair. I've been here since twelve thirty, hanging out ready to roll, but these guys really wanted to make sure they showed up for you today. We have an exciting stand up. I am, yes, James, it does sound like a lab talk, Mike. We know, we've checked. All the settings have been checked, but, and yes, Gerald's hair is always on point. James Montemagno in the chat, everybody. Um, I am Maddie Legere. I am a PM on the Xamarin team. I'm here with the coolest people in the whole world, David. Hey, what's up? I'm fixing my can, my mic, and my can <laughs> on my mic. I'll and, keep uh, working on it. Uh, I'm gonna guess it's yeah. I'll figure it out. Fabulous. And our special guest, Gerald. Woo! Hello, hello. Uh, Gerald, what what are you up to nowadays besides doing Xamarin as like your moonlighting? Yeah, well, um, I'm trying to, you know, contribute a little bit to GitHub Codespaces, which is very awesome as well. So uh, that's what that's what my day job is. And then at night, with the cool lighting on, then I work on my Xamarin stuff. So yeah, very cool. the 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 Codespaces stuff is amazing. So it's it's still magic. Each time that you fire it up, it's still magic. How that all works. But, yeah. Um, yeah. But we are so 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 lucky that you are still uh, giving us your services. In your free time, it's also like dinner time for Gerald. It's like lunchtime for me and Dave. He, so Gerald warned us that if there are like kids in the background, you know, some quintessential work for life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it's about bedtime, so they might go kicking and screaming. Who knows? Yeah, that's fun. I do too at bedtime. It's it's My better than echoes, at nine right? p.m. So all right. Uh, yeah. All right. If you're new to stand up, community stand up. Uh, it's always a good time. We'll be with you for about an hour. We're going to go over some blogs real quick. David usually shows us some PRs, but Gerald is going to show a bunch of PRs from, or just a little bit about Community Toolkit all up, the Xamarin Community Toolkit. I'm going to send you your links. Um, David's actually going to do a little bit different than PRs today. It'll be very exciting. Some cool stuff we've noticed lately. I just put the links in the chat, um, but we're going to jump right in, share my screen. This is our URL list. Just scroll on through. Um, oh my gosh. Busy month, January. People came back from the holidays and were like, ready to roll. Got to, uh, you know, write some blogs, test out some things. Dave has been busy. You might have noticed his 60 second YouTube videos with royalty free music that are fantastic. Um, I just saw one today, this morning, that was uh, upgrading a Xamarin Forms 3 to a Xamarin Forms 5. Yeah, went smoothly for me. Yeah. It works on my machine. <laughs> <laughs> the best part about that is the amount of times I've seen Dave say to customers, it's really not, just make sure you update, just stay updated. You know, everyone stays up to date. Nobody leaves their things on Xamarin 3 anymore. Xamarin Forms 4.2. And then Dave's like, oh, I just found something. Um, <laughs> We can only backport fixes so far. Right. Please update. Oh, yeah. So in between uh, his YouTube videoing and uh, everything else he does, he wrote us this lovely blog that is super intense. You all know this if you were here last month. You know, you got the updates on Maui, so you don't really need this blog. But it's cool to have it in writing. It's cool to send it to your friends. Um, just going to highlight this. Just going to highlight this. I'm not going to say anything. Hot reload.net, C sharp, whatever. No big deal. Yeah. It's a big deal. Um, I wanted to have a blog out there that we it was re recent because the last time that we really blogged about .NET Maui was after the announcement of Build 2020. So now we have a blog, states what we're doing, and uh, everybody can go check it out. And yeah, definitely share it around. When your boss says, what's this .NET Maui thing? Send him the blog. Tell me if it doesn't make sense and I'll fix it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, cool. Before I begin, before I continue, Dan Siegel just DM'd me. There's a new release of one of his packages. I think the link will work. I'm gonna share it in the chat. Hot, hot off the press. Really. Hot it's, off the press is right. Oh. So check it out. Very exciting. Dan, if you wrote a blog, 
I would highlight the blog, but you didn't. So <laughs> it doesn't have to go up on the screen. It doesn't exist if there's no blog. I mean, exactly, exactly. Um, link to this blog, please, of course. And you can find them all in the URL list right here. February 2021. I started adding links to the February 2020 list today. And then I was like, uh oh, something's wrong here. It's 2021. So. All right, Daniel got his hands on a MacBook Pro M1. Very exciting. Which uh, I I you know a few people with the, the development kits, but I don't know anyone who's actually got the M1 yet. I don't think. And no, uh, no. he's using it for Xamarin development. What, Gerald? I know a ton of people, and there's Exam Expert Day sticker. That's really cool. I know a ton of people who have one, and everyone is basically very excited about it. So mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm not one of those people, but. I made my uh, parents get one. I, I, I had them get the Mac Mini because they were like, "We need to, we need to replace our iMac." And I'm like, "Get the Mac Mini with the M1, so fast." Yeah, Quickens will be like that. <laughs> oh, perfect! I almost got the Mac Mini the other day when I was very impulsive. I was watching The Bachelor. I was like, ah, "It's like seven hundred dollars," and I did it. A phrase that I will never ever say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was watching The Bachelor and I thought, "Wow, an M1. Yeah, that's something I should need." It just it it came up in my mind and I couldn't get the thought out. I went to bed, I slept it off, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, Lotus notes on the M1. Hey Shane, nice to see you. Oh, Pierce is here. The air is even fine for pro devs. It's true. The MacBook Air is great. Okay, Daniel got it. He tested it. He said Xamarin stuff works. That's all just I care me. about from this blog. Um, but yeah, Xamarin stuff works, uh, .NET stuff works. VS Mac is running fine with Rosetta 2, which is awesome. The team is you know, obviously working on improvements and all that, um, but it works. Everything is good. Um, there's a preview Android emulator you have to grab because of course Android emulators run on very virtualized and all that. So just make sure you do that, but it works. Very exciting. Um, Oh, get the eight gig unless you're going to be doing a bunch of Docker stuff. Yeah, Docker scares me still. So maybe I will get that that eight gig M1. It's not a bad idea. Um, oh my goodness, dynamic data. So I started reading this because I was like filtering and sorting. Like, how hard can it be? Um, and this is Rendy Zamboy. We see Rendy all the time. He's great, but he's actually using Reactive UI here. So for me, this was a pretty good uh, summary of also how Reactive UI can help in some of these uh, situations. And, and in this one, it's it's searching data and stuff. And filtering, love me some good filters. Look at this, look at that little scroll picker thing. What's that one? The, the round one's a picker, right? The wheel? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just say it with confidence, then it's true. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I've got the UI experts here, so I can't even try. <laughs> but, um, and of course, all, everything's on, on the GitHub. So check it all out. Um, speaking of pickers, Steven, Steven, I don't think we've had one of your blogs on here in a couple months. I was starting to feel a little bit like, like I was having withdrawals. I know he's been busy at home, so, well, but I think he wrote a couple, well, actually we, but we got a good one now, right? Because I'll just take over here, Maddie, because this oh, one perfect. is all about the UI date picker talking about pickers. This is the old one, the, the date picker on iOS and the way it's implemented in forms. I I'm not sure entirely up to date. David might know how it is rendered now with all the new bits. Um, but at least this blog from Steven is about the new look from iOS 14. Here it is and how to handle that. Yeah, we added a platform specific. And by the way, how does my camera sound? Yeah, my it's sound? Way better. I don't know how your camera sounds, but your microphone. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> the words don't want to come out of my mouth right. Um, the uh, the latest release of not maybe not the latest but we recently added a uh, I want to say a platform specific so that you can change the mode of the picker. Um, the default was still pretty nasty, and I do believe that there is a service release in five that makes additional improvements and or fixes a regression related to the iOS picker. Sweet. So you just made you just totally like made this blog useless then. You ship the thing. Right. Uh, no, I think this. I think the blog is still great. <laughs> no, that's good. Hi, Stephen. Hope you're doing well. If you're here, I know you're busy. Keep the blogs. Well, he's, he's busy need. doing eight bit characters without shirts. Whatever. I that's thought that. About. That's. I laughed so hard when I saw that. <laughs> me too. I was like, I was like I'm gonna wait until Why I have to no do shirt. <laughs> 
I guess he's preparing for Maui for the beach life. It's the dream. All right. This one's not a blog, but I talked to Luce yesterday and it was so good to catch up with her. Um, and she told me that she had just come out on a .NET podcast. So check it out. Xamarin catch up. Love this .NET bot. He's got a little mic. He's like ready to roll. We're still working on .NET bots with some Maui swag, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, so yeah, check this one out. It's an hour of loose, which is everyone needs this at least once a week. So, you know, give it a listen. Um, this one is a bit older, but I meant to highlight it last, last time and I forgot. Um, this is by Johan. MauiBlog.com. But it's iCloud key value storage. So instead of storing your settings for your app on the device, you can store app settings on iCloud so that when you get a new phone and re-download everything, your settings are saved, your dark mode and all that stuff. So he did it with his app here. Um, and it's actually not, not super difficult. I was pleasantly surprised. I avoid all things that have to do with iCloud, both in my phone life and in my development life because it's confusing. <laughs> Um, but it actually seems like it's pretty doable. There's a little bit of code here in this um, like cloud manager file or class or whatever, but that's, that's pretty much it. So um, yeah, if you're, if you're looking to do something like this, iCloud, storage, propagation, all the goodies, check it out. All right, last one. Um, oh my gosh. This is so good. I, this someone, so Daniel actually tagged, I think a couple of us in this tweet mm -hmm. and I saw this and I was mind boggled because first of all, look at how cool this logo is. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. All right. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Yep. And uh, you've probably seen some of these UI UX challenges before people will pull things off of design websites, such as, you know, a dribble and rebuild them. Um, and this is the part one. But this is a really pretty app and it's a super, super detailed blog um, on how, look at this, look at this, look at this, on how he broke down this design um, and used that to make a Xamarin Forms layout from it with a tab view. Wonder what, wonder where he got the tab view, <laughs> Gerald. So mm -hmm. whatever, he is using the old grid row and column definitions though, which is kind of a bummer because this could be like way shorter, but that's fine. Um, yeah, so this is, I'm not going to scroll through this whole thing because it's a super, super thorough blog. But if you can't tell by this first picture right here, it's detailed, it's helpful, <laughs> it's going to be good. Um, and I really enjoyed reading it. So check it out. And that's yeah, he it. also, and he oh. mentions it, I think, further down because I, I noticed it as you were scrolling. He has his own um, kind of UI kit of helpers and views that he uses to kind of speed up his development, as I think most of us do, right? We have we have those things that we do on a regular basis. Um, and I want to say, yeah, he's got an extension for VS um, cool. and it comes with some uh, file new templates that kind of bootstrap. So um, I haven't looked at it in a while, but if that's something that you want to check out, I would definitely recommend it. And, and I'm sure he'll take feedback and maybe even some contributions to improve it. Sweet. Downloaded it. Guess I'm going to install that while you're talking about Maui first. Yeah, Maui let's first? start off with a, with a quick .NET Maui update, and mm -hmm. then I will jump over to um, uh, mm -hmm. the, other, the other topic. Are these charts? Charts with numbers? With numbers. <laughs> Pretty pictures uh, in the .NET purple theme. So uh, I just wanted to give a quick update, and we'll just do this every uh, community stand-up, where things stand in our progress towards the .NET 6 release in November, and especially the .NET MAUI um, changes as it relates to Xamarin Forms and extending to the desktop. So on the left-hand side here, the key things that the team is working on, uh, the MAUI team, let's call them that now, um, is are the view handlers and the layouts. So this is all about porting the renderer, the platform renderer architecture to the new decoupled mappers and handlers. If you want more information about what the heck that even means and why you should care, um, check out any of the numerous YouTube videos um, from Javier, from James Clancy, 
um, and others. Shane uh, has done one as well. And you can get some good details there. Also, to just go look at the code, um, and you'll get a really good sense of it. Um, the, the the reason that you should care, though, is the performance benefits, the easier extensibility, uh, the multi-targeting. So there's a lot of benefits there immediately for developers who have existing code or will be using Maui to start new applications. And then there's future benefit um, for developers who uh, are looking towards other experiences, whether it's uh, Comet related, Blazor related, or whatever new cosmic name that we come up with for some new thing that I'm, I'm not forecasting anything. I just, it seems like the cosmos is, is ours to be, I don't know. My analogy is falling apart. Okay, so uh, what you're seeing here is the, the view handlers. Those are your controls. There is actually on the wiki for .NET uh, Maui. So if you just go up to github.com .NET Maui wiki, you'll see a whole status page, control by control, platform by platform. Is it in progress? Is it done? Um, so we've got a lot of, lot of things in review right now, a lot of, lot of PRs. The most recent one was the web view handler has just been uh, started. It has uh, more things to be done to it, but you, if you, if you care to look, you can go see the details, even which methods and features are yet to be implemented. Um, other high, and so the layouts, uh, grid and stack layout are the two layouts that are currently in progress. Um, we're certainly improving the layouts as we go, um, but for the most part, we're, we're enabling them to understand this new handler. So it knows how to lay out uh, renderers, but um, it needs to now know how to lay out handlers. So um, that's cool. Uh, Essentials uh, has been merged into .NET MAUI. So that's really cool because now we won't have duplicate APIs across them. Um, MAUI is really the thing that you'll use for any cross-platform stuff. If you want to use the UI stuff, which we really hope that everybody is going to do, and we anticipate most of you will, um, that's great. Then you do that. Um, if you just want an Essentials API and you have, you know, just an Android app or just an iOS app, or you're not using the UI bits, you can do that too, and you won't pay the price for it all. So we're excited about that. It makes sense. The team maintains both pieces, the non-UI and the UI stuff. So that's really cool. Um, we do have .NET 6 Preview 1 installers. I believe that you could find them if you went looking up on GitHub, um, and that will be publicized more broadly soon, I think. Um, and so we are currently with our SDKs, uh, ingesting that, building our things against it, and preparing our installers to go out publicly once we have VS releases that fully support everything, or at least add, add support. Saying fully is probably the wrong thing to say at the first preview. If it was all full by the first preview, we would be way ahead of the game. Uh, as you can see here, uh, other progress, AOT for Android um, is, is being tested and it's on the way for iOS as well. Um, we're, I'm ha I was happy to hear uh, just this past week that the iOS build host is working and the, the whole pipeline for that building and then the remote uh, simulator also is working. Uh, WinUI 3, ha we have had a branch for quite a while with the Preview 3 updated and running and uh there is i think a new build ish so we are updating and merging and that merge is imminent uh on tuesday during our team stand up uh, i think we we committed to just go ahead and merge that it's a pretty straightforward merge and uh and so then we'll have that as our desktop and then the, we have just general Mac Catalyst progress. So Mac Catalyst, quick reminder, is the way in which you can take UI kit, add a little bit of app kit to it, and now you have a Mac desktop application, which is the method that um, Apple themselves have been using for apps like Messages and uh, I think Maps and some of their other first-party apps. And uh, we're really excited about that. Um, it looks like it's going to be awesome. So yeah, that's my quick Maui status update. Were there any questions in the chat? Because I totally have full screen on the. There were quite a few. Um, one was, will Maui support EWP? So uh, if WinUI 3 on .NET 6 can target UWP, then yes. Cool. Is that, what about, I mean, uh, for some people, that answer may not make sense. But for those who, I think, understand the Windows ecosystem, I think it makes sense. Yeah, for sure. What about Maui Preview 1? What are we going to get with that? 
So Maui Preview 1 is really more of an architectural release for developers, because as you can see on the screen here, there's not many view handlers that are done. Only 4% are completed. So unless your app is basically a bunch of labels and nothing else, or just a slider, you're not going to be able to do much with the Preview 1 of .NET Maui. You will be able to, to explore Android and iOS, because those SDKs are in and running on .NET 6. Um, but in terms of Maui cross-platform XAML type things, you should really wait to build apps with that until preview three and preview four. Um, those are the releases where we expect the majority of these handlers to be implemented, the layouts to be there, um, and all the rest of the Maui infrastructure. So um, preview one and preview two, if you just want to explore .NET 6 and you're a contributor, I would recommend it there. If you are actually building apps, wait until preview three or even preview four which from a timing standpoint is closer to May, April, May. Sweet. Cool. All right. I know there's a bunch of uh, questions that are going to continue to roll in in the chat, but Dave, okay. we don't need to talk. Actually, you have one more thing I want you to talk about, but then yeah. I want to make sure we have plenty of time for Gerald. So we have a bunch of the team in the chat as well. Shane's here. Um, you know, Gerald and I are watching while, while David's talking. Pierce is here, although he's not quite on the Xamarin team anymore. He's doing some cool Teams stuff, Teams team team stuff. So Mats is here, the whole gang. So Dave, what is what is this? Look at all. So that. I wanted to. I was noticing something because as as I think everybody uh, has noticed, I spent a little time recently since holiday break on YouTube generating some content, and as I've been doing that, and I've done this in the past too, I start looking, you know, like what is happening out there in the community in terms of video content, tutorials, or live streams and things like that. Um, in the past, I have highlighted what is happening over on Twitch, and I know that there still continues to be a lot of great things happening on Twitch, um, and many of them get archived over here to YouTube, but. I was really surprised and excited by how just the volume of new content, much of it in languages that I don't speak, uh, that has been hitting YouTube. And I thought it was so cool. I wanted to spend just a quick minute highlighting those that are currently getting a lot of traffic. But I'm going to start by just looking at the, the search query uh, for Xamarin and notice that there's tons of content here. Um, some of it is from us, of course. Um, for you, the community. So we do spend time during our, our working days generating some content. Gerald is doing most of his stuff off hours because it's not his job anymore. Um, but uh, really cool stuff here. So let me just highlight a few things. So there's live streams every, I think it's Saturday, Sunday. What is the sixth? The sixth is Saturday, right? Yeah. Um, so Junior, uh, because I can't pronounce the first and the middle name, uh, <laughs> but I always just refer to him in my mind as Junior. Uh, has been for a long time working on this SoundCloud app clone. And uh, so I would totally check that out. Um, and his channel has tons of content there. And then there's tons of other things here. Some of these things, you know, no views yet. So go check this stuff out. If you haven't been mining the richness of YouTube for Xamarin help um, and, and inspiration, I would recommend doing that. So wanted to call attention to some of these new new to YouTube, new to Xamarin content folks who could use your views. So real quick, let me run through some of these tabs. Um, so this is the Let's Create series, and we've highlighted this channel before. Tons of really good uh, tutorials on Xamarin content, and you can see he's working on a time tracker app here. Pretty nice looking design, got some gradients and things like that. So check that one out. And all these links are in the, in the deal. Um, since I'm highlighting the really cool stuff, I wanted to mention that this is the, the video that I posted that has gotten the most attention. It's the cool parallax scrolling, uh, video where I actually talk. It's not just, not just cool music. Um, so you might want to check that one out. I have a couple of those. And then, uh, I noticed this one, tons of, uh, C sharp and Xamarin content recently over the past ooh, three, three to four weeks. Techno Trainer, Multi Technologia. Um, so check that one out. Um, there, uh, Scott has been doing a series of live streams about F Sharp, Xamarin Forms, and Azure. So if F Sharp is your thing and you want to see how people are building uh, Xamarin Forms apps with it, this is a good, good one to go check out. There's a lot of Spanish content. Yeah, I just noticed a comment in the, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming mucho Espanol means 
lot of Spanish. This is a good. Um, there's this guy. This guy I just can't can't get away from. He just he's like everywhere. I am just glad that I'm wearing a different sweater today. Yeah, <laughs> that worked out well for you. <laughs> um, so you know your content, Gerald, is getting a lot of hits, a lot of views, and it's really really helpful and useful. I hope you don't burn out. I hope you're able to keep generating content because I'm barely hanging on trying to keep content flowing. It's um, a lot of fun. You've got the Xamarin community cool to tool. Cool. Yeah. Blah. Did I mention cool I spit words out today? <laughs> the XCT you've got the XCT to pull XCT. great stuff from. Um, we can't, we can't talk about YouTube without mentioning our, our guy, James. And, uh, he's been working on his, uh, and he's got like several different threads going, I think on his channel. Um, he's got kind of the, the general tutorial learning Xamarin forms stuff. And then he's got his live streams where he's building Peloton clones. And then of course the Xamarin show. And I know Gerald, you've been doing some Xamarin show. And so lots of cool stuff there. Um, sync fusion has, uh, released a couple of videos about Xamarin forms with their sets of controls. So those are really cool. I noticed, and I think I have a couple of other people here later who do the same thing. Uh, the, all the Xamarin, uh, all the monkey fest USA Xamarin related stuff is now on the Xamarin developers channel. So this was an event. Gosh, was it in December? Was it in January? I don't even remember when this was. Everything's a blur. It was during the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in March. Uh, yeah, yeah. So so sometime in the last Marches, um, it, it happened. And so there's tons of really good content there from several, several different speakers. Uh, this one was really cool. And I don't understand a lick of what this gentleman is having to say. Um, but I did scan and translate some of the pages. And uh, first of all, he's got Xamarin Forms content. That's really cool. He also speaks with other developers in his communities um, and just talks about developer life things and teaching your kids to code and things like that. So I thought that was a really cool and he has a different format than anybody else is doing. Um, and so I would totally check that out uh, if you can understand. I'm not able to. So I feel I feel like I've been robbed of a, of a good good video content. Yeah, here's one where he's speaking to a professor about teaching his children to program. I think that's really, this is a kind of, this is great content, I would imagine. A um, couple more here. WebView uh, in Xamarin Forms from Hackbytes. Hackbytes uh, has several Xamarin Forms related um, uh, videos recently, and uh, he has 8.25 thousand subscribers, so I'm super jealous of that. Let's see here. Um, this is Xamarin Guy. Xamarin Guy wins for best hair. Oops, I just covered his hair. Look at that. Look at that. Look at his hair. Gerald, we got nothing on on Xamarin Guy. This this no. We lose. We lose. <laughs> so he has he has lots of uh, tutorials and content, and uh, in particular, I think he favors the Mac. So if you're a Mac developer, you'll love that. This one's Carousel and Indicator View most recently. And then uh, this is Samir, and uh, I know I've spoken to Samir several times. Uh, JetBrains hosted him talking about Xamarin and NFC apps. So that was really cool. Love to see partner vendors uh, promoting and supporting .NET and Xamarin Forms. Uh, Javier uh, from the team, but on his own time, on his own dime, uh, showing off all the cool drawn controls that he has been working on with John Lipsky's system graphics uh, library. So check that out. This is, I think, a live stream, two hours of content. So two hours of Javier. That's twice as much as one hour of loose. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Um, this is another one that I thought was really cool because he's teaching fundamentals of MVVM. And uh, again, I mean, 24.6 thousand subscribers. What the heck? Gerald, what do we got to do to get 24.6 thousand? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know when you do. Um, whoops. I just pressed play. He talks with his hands. Love that. Um, and so, yeah, another another different format. This is actually in English. Um, so if you know somebody who needs to learn some fundamentals, I think this would be a really good one to point people to. It's only 12 minutes long and you'll master MVVM. Uh, there is other content from other teams. I only just now learned <laughs> when I watched the intro to this that the .NET Docs show is not about documentation. They're saying we are doctors of .NET and we're going to help prescribe best practices to you. 
<laughs> I didn't get that until I, I thought watched it was the a intro doc for this whole time. <laughs> I thought it was Docs, which always confused me why Brandon was there. Um, but there we go. Um, so this is a great, great show. And I wanted to highlight that uh, our, our guy, Luis Pujols, is here. Um, so he is part regular, I think a regular part of the show. So if you are interested and they talk a lot about Xamarin stuff, so that's definitely one to check out. Um, just two more here. So, uh, progress to Lyric has, uh, featured Xamarin a lot and Sam does a great job uh, showcasing all the great things you can do with .NET and Xamarin. And most recently had some guests you may have heard of Maddie Legere. Yeah. So, uh, and she's, how's the plan? Is the plan even alive at this point, Maddie? It actually is. It's right there. I repotted it last week. Okay. Um, my ivy is dead. There are no leaves on it, but I have stuck mm -hmm. it in the window, hoping that it will, it will miraculously come back to life. Is this, is, is the plant thing a pandemic thing? Cause, um, oh, yeah. cause I know that like baking bread is a thing yeah. that's associated, um, by not buying, I guess, adopting a dog. Yes. <laughs> buy a dog. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, so like my wife, we now have tons of plants around the place yeah. and like typically we, they would all be dead by now, but she's keeping them alive and she just bought this like tropical mister thing that needs to like keep some, they're the kind that like Good. they close up at night and open during the day. I don't know what's going Love on. Love it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I she already your app, dogs, I guess. and I'm too impatient to bake. So I went full send on the plant. <laughs> There you go. Um, nice. Great. And you you uh, were able to work it into your your daily work life with uh, exactly. Kind of so that's wait. Cool. I'm going to interrupt you though because I, I got a ping. Someone reminded me. I forgot to share one of the coolest podcasts that have come up, that came out in January, which was uh, James and Dave Zamarin pod or James and Matt's not your Zamarin podcast, but they had Medusa Medical on. So the logo of it is in fact the .NET bot and they've worked a lot with our server and customer advisory team. So I put that in the chat, just so you all know, very exciting. Yeah. You can listen to it at like 1.25 speed, which is great. Cause we all know how James talks so slowly. <laughs> 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 That's kidding. Anyways, sorry. Yeah. Back the Med USA app is actually a really cool customer sample because, um, it's, I mean, it's like mission critical, life critical type application. Um, yeah. Used in the field by uh, emergency people. So that's really cool. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so la last YouTube real quick uh, from Aguilar Systems. Um, this one is about uh, login REST APIs from Xamarin Forms. So you get a little bit more of that in-depth advanced. It's not just all about UI. It's how do you integrate with your services uh, and how you do login. So uh, another one in Spanish. And uh, he has a nice microphone, so this one's uh, really good to listen to. So pro tip for all of you out there doing YouTube and wanting to make content, invest in that microphone. It makes a big difference. Right, We've right, Gerald? We've all heard that at the beginning, Dave. <laughs> yeah, we did hear it at the beginning, right? <laughs> Turns out it was my new pants cam that was, yeah, yeah, it was it was the one. I don't actually have it set up in my OBS right now, though, whereas I'd turn it on. But mm, this is is this a cliffhanger to Pants Cam Two, the return yeah. of the pants? Okay, PC Two. There you go, Pants Cam <laughs> Two. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> so there you oh, go. So if you're if you're out there doing video content, make sure you keep it up and uh, send it to us. Tag us on Twitter and whatever. We'll help. Absolutely. We'll help promote you. Um, and let yeah. us know if there's any questions that we can answer to help you improve your YouTube content. So I love I love the volume that I'm seeing right now. It's really cool. Yep. All righty, Gerald. Gerald. <gasps> so much pressure. Okay. You ready to um, roll? Yes. I am definitely ready to roll. What are we going to talk about? What do you want to know? I don't know. There's this thing. GitHub code spaces. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, There's here it thing. is. It's got some community. There's some uh -huh. tools for it. Uh-huh. Yeah. So if you've been following me and the Xamarin ecosystem for a little bit, um, I have been working on the Xamarin Forms team. But, you know, you know it. how it goes, I switch teams. I love GitHub code spaces now, but you know, my heart will always be with Xamarin. So Xamarin Community Toolkit, because that community is also something where I came from, right? Um, so that's something that I really, really love. That is a aspect that I really loved about Xamarin Forms. Um, and with this community toolkit, so we've talked already a lot about .NET MAUI um, and 
Xamarin Forms 5 is out now, stable. Go check it out. And you know, there is a gap between .NET, uh, Xamarin Forms 5 right now and .NET MAUI until November. I mean, is that a second March? What is that? It's, it's this huge gap that we have to survive without you know, any big, major, nice features that we are used to from the Xamarin Forms team. Um, so to accommodate that and do a lot more, we've invented the Xamarin Community Toolkit, which is already very awesome because we have the tab view. Oh my gosh, everyone was waiting for that. The tab view, fully customizable, stylable tabs and everything. Um, what more do we have? Like, oh, so that's maybe an important thing to mention. All the things that were um, experimental in Xamarin Forms 5 have been either, you know, branded as stable, like, hey, you're good enough, you can stay, or, you know, might need a little bit of work. Uh, we can't do that in Xamarin Forms 5 right now, but let's move it over to uh, the Xamarin Community Toolkit. It will mature there a little bit more, and maybe it can come back in .NET MAUI. Uh, maybe, you know, let's be honest, sometimes it doesn't work. It isn't you, it's me. Um, and it will stay in the toolkit, which is fine too, right? Um, so there's th that. That's a couple of things, and one of them is the expander, uh, the C sharp markup extensions, the media element, and I always think there's one more, but I can't think of it. So probably it's not there. Um, anyway, so that's the things that have moved from Xamarin Forms to Xamarin Community Toolkit. So they're still there for you to use. Just change one little namespace, drop that new get in, and boom, you're you're golden. You can use it. Um, so that's one of the things that we tried to do. But the other thing is like, you know, especially like with the converters, like everyone has that inverted bool converter thing, right? Uh, whatever you're using XAML and you bind to this Boolean value and you need to have that Boolean value inverted because that's just what you do. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of a sample. So when you when you have something like that is, is visible um, and Typically, the thing that that's dependent on gives you the inverted Boolean value of the is visible that you want to show, right? This is a very confusing story whenever you don't see any code, um, but bear with me. So that's one of those things, the con converters and behaviors and the effects, uh, they're too small usually for the typical de developer to put it into a library. Um, and, and actually create a thing out of it. So you just keep copying it over from project to project, maybe tweaking it a little bit here and there. So there's 20 versions out there, um, and that's not ideal, right? Um, so what we try to do with this toolkit as well is just gather all these uh, behaviors, effects, converters, whatnot, um, get them into this package so that we are basically creating uh, besides Xamarin Forms, Xamarin Essentials to become that third package that everyone's going to install on their Xamarin Forms project. Um, and that's basically what it is. So end of show. Until next week. Um, no, so I, I'm just going to show you a little bit. I'm just going to keep talking until someone interrupts me. Um, so here we have the um, uh, repository, because it has community in there, right? Because what we are doing, me, um, because just I, I still like Xamarin, and Javier, uh, who is still on the Xamarin Forms team, we are driving this from, from Microsoft. But that doesn't mean anything. We are just here to make sure that we get you unblocked, that we get the free build server minutes to have some of that Microsoft credit to back this thing. Uh, but we really want to enable the community to um, contribute to this, to, to work with this uh, with, on us with this. Um, so, you know, we have assembled somewhat of a core team with a couple of people who, you know, have made it a commitment to um, invest some time in this. Um, and they're doing really great work. I can see Andre's beautiful face right here. Um, we have um, uh, Pedro Jesus, we have Javier, we have me. And this is going to be really stupid when I forget something. I think that's basically our core team right now. And we have a couple of people um, from the community who are also very active David. when you start name when you start naming community members yeah then, you, you, you to start to panic because you're like i'm yes. gonna forget somebody they're gonna yeah. feel like i yeah. don't yeah. value them yeah. oh man exactly but that's not the case we value each and every one and that's why i hate to bring up like the core team you know because yes we have a couple of people that need to help move prs forward that you know triage those issues uh, that we know who will uh, have the ability to reserve a little bit of their precious time to help us out with this um, and that's why we refer to them as the core team but 
as far as I'm concerned, everyone is the core team. We want your contributions because it has community in there. That's what it's all about. Um, so bring your ideas, triage those issues, open PRs, contribute to the docs. We have docs. It's crazy. Um, so it's crazy. So I'm just going to show you a couple of things. So this is the repository where we have all the stuff. We're trying to follow the, uh, because we are also part of the .NET Foundation, um, so weird, and they have a guideline on how these folders should look, which are, is a pretty good idea. So we're following that. And uh, basically the things you want to look for is the source right here. That's everything you need. Uh, so we, I've mentioned the C-sharp markup extensions. We've broken that out into a separate package uh, because, you know, just to, we figured that there is people who like the markup extensions, uh, but maybe you do not want to use the toolkit. I don't know why, but we'll convince them. No worries. But you, those people might be there. So we've broken it out into a separate package. Um, and you can use that uh, just as you did before in Xamarin Forms directly. So there's two packages right now. We might decide to break it up a little bit more. I hate the idea right now, but you know, times change. Um, so all the things are right in here. We have unit tests. Yes, people, this is a really, this is a project. This is an actual project but because we have unit tests. Um, <laughs> And in here, we have the converters, the effect. So we've tried to break this down into you know, a logical folder structure. So you should be able to find everything pretty quickly. Now, the other thing, uh, if you want to have a look and just be you know, someone who is uh, going to use this stuff and not so much uh, maybe contribute to this, um, we have a sample app here. So this is basically, if you've ever looked into uh, Xamarin Forms, they have the gallery app. Um, we have Steven on board. Steven, that's another community member in our core team. <laughs> How could forgot. I forget him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I had to forget anyone, it's best to forget yeah. him. Yeah. He'll forgive me. Um, so and he 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 you know he knows his way around the UIs and there's other people involved so uh, I don't want to you know down talk anyone uh, but we've got this beautiful designed app with all these same categories here and we're trying I think there's a couple of them missing but we're trying to have each feature that we have in the toolkit also uh, a one-on-one -on -one sample in here in this uh, sample app. So, you know, you can just pull this down, um, um, build it uh, yourself and check it out. Or of course, you can just go into the code and see how you can use all this. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, also the C-sharp markup is in here, of course, behavior. So we have a couple of them. Uh, one that's always nice, I think, is user stop typing behavior. That's a cool one. So you know that scenario where you have this search bar um, and you do not want to hit your back end like every character that you type, right? You just want to wait it for a second because people are typing really fast uh, or talking really fast. Uh, and maybe you want to have a minimum length um, that you want to wait before you actually fire that query, right? So that's something that you can do with this um, very easily. So if I just start typing here, you see as long as I keep typing, nothing happens, nothing happens. When I stop for a second, boom. It fires a command and you can perform that search. So that is pretty cool. Um, same thing if we do like for three characters. So as long as I keep it into two and I keep typing, keep typing or do two and I wait for a second, nothing happens. But when I add some more, boom, it does it. So how cool is that? Just one behavior, you can add it, configure a couple of properties and it works. Um, all these behaviors, all these converters are in here. Uh, but I think what people will be most excited about is the views. Um, and let's, so camera view, that one has been sitting in Xamarin Forms for a little while. Um, to be honest, it could have been reviewed a little bit more. There's a couple of rough edges that we're trying to work on. Uh, so please help us with that. Um, media element pop-up, pop-up. That's the other one that everyone's <laughs> waiting for. So pop-up this, Andrew, if you're watching or re-watching this, thank you so much. I've said thank you over the past 12 hours a lot to you, but uh, this this PR has originated in Xamarin Forms, uh, brought over to the Xamarin Community Toolkit, and Andrew has worked with us on this for a year or more. So thank you for your patience and all your efforts. That is truly amazing. But what this does is um, um, have these pop-ups natively, so they have that native look and feel. So whenever I click this here, you can see, you know, that little. It has a name, but I've forgotten it right now on iOS, and it just looks and and works. Um, like that, you can have stop scrolling. You can have buttons here uh, without the light dismissed, so I can can tap here on the sides. Nothing happens. You really have to tap on this thing. Um, I didn't have to uh, play around with this 
that much because it has just been merged like yesterday. Um, so we still need to, uh, you know, polish everything up. This is on the develop branch. We need to get the docs up and that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's in here in the nightly feed for you to, if you want to play with this. Uh, so the other thing that I already just mentioned, so we have the state layout, which is something that Steven has contributed. So we have a couple of those as well, like, you know, library maintainers that are out there uh, who, you know, started that library, but maybe now it has become too much of a burden uh, because COVID, because life happens. Um, which is totally fine, but you know, it is their child. I, I know that now with Examine Community Toolkit. Uh, so it's not just something that you want to toss, right? <laughs> that might be give you in trouble if you toss your child. Um, so, you know, for projects, uh, that is something if you are willing to, we can talk. I'm not going to say that I'm going to let everything in. Uh, but we can talk about, you know, if we can bring this over to the Xamarin Community Toolkit. Um, and, you know, that can lighten the the, the, the maintenance burden uh, because we have this team and this whole community um, and we, you're suddenly putting this into a package so that will, you know, um, save people from installing another package on their project. Um, so, you know, there's there's all kinds of upsides uh, on doing that. So if that's something that you're thinking about, uh, you have that library lying around that's doing awesome stuff please talk to us uh, and we can, can make that happen. But state layout is definitely one of those things um, because that is known as state squid before uh, by Steven um, and it has a little bit of these, these loading things. So this demo doesn't really do it justice, I feel, but you can basically define a couple of states um, and style that and easily flip between those states. Um, so I think the, 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 uh, big use case here is whenever you are have that loading screen and you can have that shimmer effect, you can definitely do that very easily with this state layout. So that is very cool. Um, and of course, the tab view, I just want to quickly touch on this one as well, because this is, I think this is something Javier mostly has worked on, um, mm -hmm. who's also doing um, a lot of cool UI stuff. Um, and this is the thing that everyone has been waiting for, because David has been going on and on about this for so long that it's super hard to personalize, to stylize, to customize that little tab bar down there, which is totally not our fault, which is just something that is mostly restricted by, you know, the way iOS and Android works. They are, they are super strict about how that should look like and you can only tweak uh, little bits of, you know, the colors and the icons that you can put on there. So it's super hard to write a custom renderer to make that work uh, nicely with all the things. Um, and so that's why with the tap view, we're just not using all of that tap stuff that um, uh, the, the the big OSs are giving us. We're just drawing our own thing because that's what we do. Um, well, so this this control I just wanted to mention is yeah. is one that we really we hoped that we could get it further along and actually bring it into yeah. Maui from the get go. Um, and hey, you know, I mean, if we have tons of time towards the end of the Maui cycle, maybe this is the way to go. But it's not just me complaining. I'm channeling all the developers that I talked to. Like when we, back before the pandemic, when we had Xamarin Developer Summit in Houston and it was super hot, um, we, we ran studies there and we had people voting and we did other studies outside of that. And everybody told us that the, the hardest things to customize were the app bar at the top, the nav bar and the tabs. Yep. So this, and when we, when we looked at how people typically overcame them, it was by doing exactly this. Just ditch that native tab bar, build your own buttons, off yep. to the races. Works out well, performs well. So seems like the right thing to do. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, and that's again, Jed, the thing that I mentioned, right? Like, okay, now because of reasons, uh, this didn't make it into forms. We are gonna have to see about .NET MAUI because you know, .NET MAUI is still in the future, but that's something that, can definitely happen, right? That we just, you know, put it in here, um, do all the hard work uh, because, you know, I was doing that anyway when I was on the team. Um, <laughs> I'm making friends here. Uh, so, but, you know, um, and let it mature here. And then whenever, uh, you know, we think that this is a robust thing uh, that we can, you know, have the internal discussion because that's the good thing about having me and Javier to see if we can move that over and make it a first class citizen into .NET Maui, or at least, you know, we'll have a bunch of learnings that we get from this toolkit um, and, and all the controls that are in it uh, that we can bring to .NET Maui to make that even better. So, you know, custom tabs, um, here you can do it. You just have these two side tabs right here. You can have that little tab thingy um, that um, uh, can act as a button. 
Uh, I'm not entirely, I didn't really have the time to play with it yet, but I think this is technically also a tab item, but just doesn't have like um, any content or something. And then it acts like a button. I think that's the concept that you're using. Uh, but because of that, you can just, you know, uh, create these cost, cool, awesome uh, UI designs that you can find on Dribble with the whole custom tab bar. You have this round edges here and then that middle button. Um, I well, While I was doing the video on my YouTube channel the other day, I got a comment, or maybe it was an examine show, um, that it didn't uh, take into account the safe area here, uh, which is, I think, more of a shortcoming of the demo app or you know the code maybe in this page. Um, I don't feel that's something that the tap view should automatically pick up. Maybe it does. Um, then we should talk about that in an issue or something. Um, another thing that comes out of the box, just scrolling between these tabs, that's something that you can do, no problem. Um, so, you know, all cool things. And this is actually something that was just merged one or two days ago too, uh, because one of the first things whenever we merged this tab view that came up was like, how can we lazy load this? Because I don't want, you know, uh, load a gazillion pages in there uh, and have them all loaded from the get-go because that will impact your startup time. That's why we came up with the lazy view. So this isn't just for your tab view, this is for Excuse me, this is for everything. So we have a lazy view in here now. If I switch to the development branch, I'm just going to do it and show you because else you won't believe me. Here we go. Source, community toolkit, community toolkit, views. And I'm going to teach you the keyboard shortcuts for navigating GitHub. Do that. Uh, here we go. Lazy view. I'm good on the shortcut keys, but not for GitHub, apparently. Um, but here we go. So lazy view. So this is something that you can apply to a whole bunch of things, to all the things. Uh, and one of the things is uh, the tab view. So you can you can lazy load these tabs. They are not loaded whenever you go here. Uh, to be honest, while talking, I just noticed this sample in here, so I have no clue what this is doing. Uh, but if you look at the code, probably this is one of those samples that you really have to look at the code for. Um, you can see that this is lazy, lazy loaded and it doesn't um, impact your startup time by loading all the tabs up front. So that is also who, something that- Who chooses uh, the lot. colors? You're killing uh, me. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Come on, where's Steven? It's, I'm blaming Steven. <laughs> Uh, uh, Steven set up this this navigation here, and then you can see basically where Steven where it drops off. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, and I think so. Tab tabs is also something uh, or badges. Sorry, I said tabs badges uh, is also something that people really uh, would like to see. So we've got that here. I know the first question somewhere in the chat is going to be how is the badge support for Shell coming along. I don't know. I think that's something we want to try and fix with the uh, toolkit as well. Um, but let's stick with these badges. Badges on the tabs right here. You, it can have text. It says new right here. I know I have the ultra wide resolution, so sorry for that. Uh, forgot to fix that before yeah, this. Flex in your super wide resolution. Yeah, fine. I no was problem. I was busy with my hair and not with you know <laughs> what you were gonna see. Um, so you know that's that's all cool. Um, Charles, we yeah, have some questions. Yes. Oh, that's good. Let's do that. One's from our good friend, Ben. Can you use the lazy view in an item template? That is one question I do not know. Um, <laughs> uh, I would, I could probably try to answer that. Um, you would probably could try to use it there, but uh, item templates typically are data templates anyway. And so they're going to be lazy loaded and they typically will you'll want them to adhere to whatever the caching strategy is of the thing that's using the item template. Sweet. So that's where I would start the conversation. Yeah. And the fun thing is, is that Ben's a way better developer than I am. So he can just go read the source and tell me. <laughs> wrong. Um, what about this one from amazing Fred? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Do these UI elements respect accessibility settings, text size, all that stuff? That is also a good question. So I don't know what these UI elements are. Um, if we talk about all the other stuff than tap view, I'm going to say yes, um, especially the pop-ups that came up on Twitter today. Um, and because they are uh, using the native pop-up mechanisms, uh, that's definitely going to hook into the accessibility that is available on the OS. For the tap view, I'm going to be honest, uh, that is something that we probably need to work on. Uh, because that is the downside of you know drawing your own controls like these. 
uh, you will kind of lose a little bit of that ability. Uh, but I know there has been a big push on Xamarin Forms as well for the accessibility. Um, so I, we will definitely be in touch with them to get their learnings and apply that on the TAFU because that is something that's super important. Uh, but I can't really say right now. If that's something that's important to you, please um, test it out. Um, if you have a little bit of time you can spare um, and let us know your findings and how we can improve that. Sweet. All right, here's a good one. How, how do you get started? with the Xamarin Community Toolkit? Oh, I'm new to the world. Where can beginners start? OK, so I'm not sure if this means start with like, you know, start consuming this, start using this in your project, um, or start contributing, uh, because I want you to do both. Uh, but coincidentally, I put up the docs right here. And you can find the, uh, um, I think the links are in the URL list that Maddie um, mm -hmm. shared earlier. So we have aka.ms slash xct. That will bring you to the repo. And we have aka.ms slash xct dash docs. That will bring you to the docs. Or just use Google Bing, whatever. Um, and that will bring you here. So again, I'll be super honest. Uh, the docs could be more. There could always be more docs, but we try to, you know, at least have the bare minimum on here so you can see what APIs are available um, because, you know, all of this is happening in our spare time also for me. Um, so we're trying to do our best. I hope you will see that. Uh, but here we have for all the things in here, almost all the things in here, um, uh, at least uh, getting started like with the APIs that are there. Some of the pages like the C Sharp markup are a little bit more extensive because they've existed in Xamarin Forms. And we got lucky because the actual docs, uh, technical writers for the Xamarin Forms uh, team have uh, spent their time on this. Uh, but for other things, you know, you will see it's a little bit less, but we try to um, also get all the things in here. If you want to start contributing, um, I uh, have on the planning um, to create some content around there, uh, around that. Uh, but for now, if just try it. If you can't figure it out, ping me, do it. And I'll make sure to create something for you, help you out. We'll make it happen. Sweet. Sweet. Well, hey, we're right at the top of the hour, which is good because we have some uh, meetings to go to. I Always think. meetings to go to. I do. But all righty, everybody. Hey, Gerald, thanks. It's been great catching up. I love yes. the toolkit. I'm going to have to work it into my plants app, get some more in there. <laughs> um, Definitely. All if there's, all of them. Yes, yes. If you need anything, just ping me. You've heard it. Yeah, and uh, I know a lot of folks in, in here in the Twitch chat stream as well, but none of us are logged into Visual Studio. So if anyone wants to drop your channel real quick while the, the final video plays, feel free. I can't rate <laughs> anything. I'm sorry. But uh, sweet. Well, all right, Dave, I'll see you next month. Gerald, I'll see you online. And everybody in the chat, I'll see you on Twitter probably. Um, we'll see you the first week of March for Xamarin Community Stand Up March edition. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Sweet. All right. See y'all soon. See you. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>